an honor to be here with all of you brave, brave people with cold feet. Um, I'm usually the type that sits in the library and does research, and I don't really speak, but um, after I spent um, three months living in Yemen, I felt like I owed it to them to come out today and give it a go. You may think because of what you've read in the news that the country of Yemen is simply a hotbed or a failed state, a corrupt government that has become a growing terrorist threat, or worse. Or, like me, you may have lived there and recognized the internal problems, but also have come to respect its people and fall in love with its magic. Let us make no mistake, the Yemeni people are resilient and determined and they know exactly what is going on politically around them, and they themselves are active. There was at least one group, if not more, gathered outside of parliament every single day without fail, and almost every single Yemeni was kind towards me, even as an American, because they, I quote, understand what it feels like to be a victim of the media and would give us the benefit of the doubt in case Fox News was wrong about us as well. <laughs> Understanding the political climate of Yemen is difficult, but to begin, there was South Yemen and the Port of Aden, colonized by the British until the late 20th century, and slightly more, a slightly more politically stable North Yemen that was a part of the Ottoman Empire until 1918 and became a republic in 62. In 1990, these two entities combined to become the Republic of Yemen, which over, over which Ali Abdullah Saleh, the former ruler of North Yemen, rules until this very day, approximately 30 years. Needless to say, the Sunni-backed government has never quite satisfied the needs of all of its people. To better understand our relationship with Yemen, we need to look no further than the history of the aid we've given them. From $17 million in fiscal year 2008 to the new suggested amount of $106 million in purely military aid for the fiscal year of 2011. The U.S.'s interest in Yemen has obviously increased in an unprecedented way, but why? It is undeniable that some of what you may have heard is true. About half of the population lives on less than $2 a day. Illiteracy is rampant, about 45%, and the unemployment rate is an appalling 35%, not to mention almost daily power outages, and Yemen may very well be the first country in the history of the world to run out of water. Should we send humanitarian aid? I think absolutely, but the only question currently on the table is should the U.S. increase military aid to Yemen and expand the war against terror and Al-Qaeda again. And as much as you and I may like to believe that the answer to this question does not affect us, that is unfortunately very untrue. As the process of nation building begins and your tax dollars are skimmed from your paychecks and turned into weaponry, you begin to have a say. Shouldn't we be concerned about the consequences of the military aid we'll be pouring into Yemen and its corrupt government when there are some other, dare I say, more pressing humanitarian problems and hopes that it brings them economic and political stability? We must ask ourselves, is this what is best for the Yemeni people or us? Or is this about another strategically located military base? As I usually say, I would prefer that you all draw your own conclusions about what is right and wrong here because it will mean more to you. But in drawing these conclusions, I urge you to remember the history of war on terror and the countless lives lost, both literally and figuratively, and the debt incurred and the integrity and freedom sacrificed for such a thing. Thank you.